Uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is that as we go along, I'm going to sort of explain why we're doing the things that we're doing, because one of the goals here was to help you look at ways you can use technology and tools to be more efficient. So I'm recording to my own desktop because it allows me to control the view. I can switch from a speaker view to a gallery view. But when I record just to the cloud, it forces just a speaker view. So I, I like this gallery view where I can see everybody's smiling faces. And so when I record to my own computer, I've got that flexibility. Just, just so you know, just so you know. Now, I'm always experimenting. I've been running some tests, trying to see if I can you know, record on a different device to the cloud and to see if I can, I, I'm always, you know me, I'm always testing stuff out, right? But so far, the recording to your, your computer is, is the important thing. The challenge with that though, is that you ended up having to take that file, pop it into LumaFusion or iMovie and then edit it and then upload it. it, it it's just what we have to do, right? So we are recording, listen. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you, thank you so much for this wonderful response and taking the time to come together and to enter into this conversation. We've got a few folks who are joining us again who have been with us the last couple of days, and we want, I want to thank our community of practice leads for, for engaging in this way. So um, we, we just want to welcome you, and we want to start this conversation. This is going to be one of many conversations that we hope that we can start and keep on going. Um, I'm just going to fire up a couple of quick slides um, to just very, very briefly show you a couple of things and to start a conversation. And then guess what? You're going to be, we're going to be chatting with each other here right away. So just give me a minute to share just a, a couple of key ideas and get us going. And um, then, then listen, we're turning it back over to you to communicate. This is the important part. So uh, for those of you who don't know Dr. Thibodeau and I, you know, we've been involved in, in, in online learning at, uh, or the digital learning leading program at Lamar University. I'm up here in uh, North Vancouver, Canada, and Talissa is, where are you located? You don't know by now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Beaumont, Texas area. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm a true online learner in the sense that I've been, I live in a completely different country and I teach online. So um, we want you to keep calm and learn on. Um, I'm, I'm borrowing this idea that's it's been out of the internet. Um, and most of the ones you'll see will say, keep calm and teach on. No, I want you to learn on. Yeah, that's kind of the, the shtick that we have. Um, I also want to encourage you. Um, I think you're all doing a wonderful job. I think you are. Um, the attitude is so positive. Everybody is, in, is encouraging. And I, I, the research is clear. And, and we can apply this to online learning in the same way that happens in the classroom. John Hattie's research shows just as long as you're not physically or psychologically abusing your students, guess what? Almost anything you do is going to help them learn. The key thing is to figure out what is going to help them learn the most. Same thing we got to do online. What's going to help our st students learn the most? You can't hurt them. Well, if you're intentionally hurting them, you can, but I don't think you're planning to do that. So I think you're all doing a wonderful job, but we want to have this conversation to help you do even a better job. Okay. Now, um, I don't know if you, anybody here follows AJ Giuliani, but he had a post here a couple days ago saying, hmm, the bad news is there's no instructional manual. The good news is there's no instructional manual. We're all making it up as we go along. I'm making it up as you go along. But then again, if you've ever dealt with me, you know I'm always making it up as I go along. But guess what? We all get to do this. And the exciting part is the creation that we're going to embark on is going to change our learners' lives. And we're going to stumble across some of the most amazing things. There's going to be a lot of serendipity that comes out of this. So again, be prepared to explore and to make it up as you go along. It's okay. You're not going to hurt your learner. Okay, so we all asked you to take a look at that change of focus video, and this is sort of the focus that we want to have a discussion about. That video about changing our focus from, you know, the curriculum and the content to those authentic learning opportunities. This is the important part. We're going to break you off into breakout rooms here in just a minute or in a few seconds. We want you to very briefly introduce yourself and then talk about the key insights from the video. Now, for those of you who didn't watch the video, you have to summarize it for those who didn't watch the video. Hopefully, everybody did watch the video. So I'm going to just stop the sharing, and uh, Talissa is going to break you into the breakout rooms, and uh, you're going to talk, 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 talk. Yes, and then we'll come back together. We'll have an open collaborative discussion. So I've got the breakout rooms ready to go. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, and I'll broadcast an announcement just about a minute before we come back together. Here we go. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's the roll of the dice, whatever it may be. <laughs> 
Well, actually, it, it's so it's so welcoming and so warm because Jamie's, hi, how's it going? And, and, <laughs> and I was just waiting for Sue to say, oh, good, we got somebody new to talk to. Although Sue and I were talking yesterday, so maybe maybe the response is, oh, Harapnik again. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Terry. So hi. thoughts about thoughts about the video, folks. I'll. I'll... <laughs> Who wants to speak? Hmm. I put nerd pressure on. I know, right? Um, I feel you know the shift in focus um, needs to be more um, has to has to happen. I mean, I feel like we we understand it as people. Like, I know, it, like I've been through the program and I and I live it too myself. Um, I just feel that it's it's hard for other teachers to notice that that that's where the sh that's where that shift should be. And like we were talking about the other day about schooling versus learning, you know, like, and that, that really hit home for me yesterday. I was like, that's true. It is like schooling and not really like learning. And my kids are doing that right now. And I'm trying to have them learn themselves because we're home um, versus just going and put, putting that paper in and checking mark is done and good, check it off the list and did it, I've done it. So I feel it has to be a, definitely a shift. Terry, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, so I definitely agree. And I think it, like the mindset, um, I guess it has to be communicated too. And um, the shift has to be shared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't hear you, Sue. <laughs> you have to sign language. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, Terry. You said that the shift has to be shared. That's the hard part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it it's sharing that idea. Um, I, I had a meeting yesterday. Um, because I've been doing this for a lot of decades, I get called on and I get called into a lot of organizations who I, I'm an expert, right? And people just don't, they, they want to do school online, right? They, the, this idea is, it's, we just deliver content. Don't, don't you just take our same curriculum and we just deliver it online. Isn't that, isn't that what we do? And so pe this idea of communication, collaboration, creation, right? Uh, coaching, guiding, mentoring, getting people to work together and collaborate on real stuff. Well, why would you do that? We don't do that face to face. So part of the problem is, as you mentioned, Jamie, That's is true. that, you know, we're, we're trying to do school online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, and they really truly don't know what it looks like either. And, and, and being part of like a learning lab like this, um, for those people who've never been part of something like that, maybe would open their eyes up, you know, a little bit more of going, Oh, really? Like, I didn't realize that, you know, you could break out, come together, throw some ideas, spark some interests. They think it's just, you know, putting directions up on the screen and just having the kids just do these activities. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's frustrating in the sense where you would hope that, they don't know what it looks like. And like, again, it's like, you know, baptism by fire, but it's not the, the baptism we want them to have. It's more like, it's, it's like just, they're thinking what they, they're making what they think it is. So. There, I think, as you mentioned, I think there's a default to doing what is safe and what people know. And it, yeah. it's that norm. Yeah. Terry, you're, you're in California, aren't you? I'm in Texas. Or to, oh, I, okay. Why was I? Th I apologize. For some reason, I thought you were in California because I know in California they really control the curriculum. You know, um, although in mm. Texas, Texas mm. is yes, it's pretty controlled too. Yeah. New Jersey is too, very much so. Very much so. They they're very state uh, test driven. You know, that's like that's annoying too. So because it, we have the SGPs and all that and student growth percentiles and. Teachers get very nervous about that stuff because they want their kids to do well. Well, and it's actually the teachers. We, we know from the research on this that it's the teachers being evaluated. Not It's not the students because the teachers mm -hmm. are being evaluated on how well did they deliver the curriculum. Really, that, that's what it is. So how well did you where did you Where do you find that? So if you are the host of the session or actually just the host, not the co-host, can manage okay. the – breakout room so whenever you set the meeting you're the host it'll pop up right. if you enable it in your settings okay 
Yeah. So you've got to enable it. Otherwise, it won't automatically be there. Now, with the update, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, if it'll be there, but I just had to enable it in my settings, so it, then it pops in for every room. All right, well, that's really yeah. interesting. Isn't that cool? Yeah, Online blended really learning. Yeah. Fun. I know. That's fun. That's Jamie's third time around with it. <laughs> oh, so, the, Dr. Thibodeau, does that mean we're modeling online blended learning as we're doing online blended learning? <laughs> I don't know, but you know what's really cool is when we break out and do this again, I'm going to recreate the rooms and mix everybody up a different way. Mm -hmm. So that'll oh. be really cool. And that's exciting. You get, about that. you get to see somebody different, right? We all know when you what when you have people face to face, they're territorial, right? They don't want to move. Once they once they've got their chunk of the classroom, there's no, you know over my dead hand, they're going to make me move, right? <laughs> but here online, you can force people in, or you can put people in the different classrooms. So anyway, so listen, we want to, This is the conversation we want to have. We want questions as you're going along, thoughts, thoughts about the video, thoughts about this this experience, thoughts about online blended learning. Just keep on, keep on talking. This is, this is the goal here. This time is for you folks to come together, explore, and talk. So, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll raise a, a, maybe a question that I maybe know the answer to. I don't know. Um, you know, what does it look like for you guys when it comes to the way your schools are, are doing this this distance learning. I'm, I'm having conversations and really trying to shed light on distance learning. It's obvious in this room probably knows that it's not about sitting down at the exact same time. Um, it is about empowering your kids, probably empowering your staff um, that, you know, like I think what I appreciated in our master's program was here is the expectation here, you know, by the end of the week or by the end of this course, here's where you're going to be and we're going to support you and how you get there. And it wasn't a mandated, you must work every Monday from nine to 10 and from 10 to 11, you're doing this. Um, what does it look like for, um, I guess the schools you guys are in? How well, it's, interest, it's interesting that we have our office hours between 815 and 1215. I don't get messages, to be honest with you, from children or even family members until like three, four, five, <laughs> seven. And I, and I say to my husband, I say, I feel bad. I want to answer them because they're they're asking me questions. They're engaging in what I want them to do. I'm not going to say, well, sorry, it's the 12, 15, I'm done. Like it doesn't work that way. Um, so, and I want to encourage that they not all can get on at that time of the day and maybe, and, and some kids learn better in the morning, some kids learn better in the afternoon, um, and it's the way their family functions. So I feel, that's how I feel as like a, as, as a teacher, I'm, I'm going to be, open, I'm fortunate, I'm like open all day long, you know, cause I want to answer their questions as best I can and support them. So I feel like I hear you on that one when it shouldn't be at the same time all the time. Well, I think also it's an equity issue. You know, we have a lot of students here who, you know, they might be sharing one device with like five other siblings, you know, mm -hmm. they might be sharing one parent to help them out with school with a job, you know? And so, um, you know, to try to have school at the same time every day is, is going to rule some kids out of access. So we need to embrace asynchronous learning, you know, as a more equitable way to get to everyone. I have to comment on that, Rebecca, because yesterday Mike and I both took in a town hall meeting with Apple, right? And one of the one of the things one of the participants said, who's also part of the CEI initiative, was that there are people, there are parents who have three kids in the system, and they're getting seven phone calls per kid per week. Multiply that seven times three, twenty-one calls per week just about their three kids and it's getting overwhelming for for people mm -hmm. so we need to be this is another reason why doing everything at the same time is a real issue because parents have to you know work from home in a lot of cases so we have to be very mindful of those things you guys bring up some really great points there yeah i like what yeah. my, my district did they split for secondary they split things up every other day and then friday is a kind of a catch-up check in, make sure you've got everything in place. But they also limited it. They told the teachers you get an hour of work, period. Don't, if you want them to read, that's part of your hour, unless it's like absolutely massively critical and then you can back it up because the kids are overwhelmed. We got teachers with kids. We've got, you know, I mean, there's all these crazy things, you know, when you think about it, you got a teacher 
who also has kids of their own that they have to work with. And so how do you manage that time? So they left it asynchronous with some mm-hmm. options to do some group meetings if you want to, but everything gets recorded. So the kids who can't make it, they can come back to it later. And then you've got all the way through the weekend to get the work in till Monday, really. So it comes out over the weekend and then you got like eight, nine days to get it in before they started. You know, we start going, Hey, where are you? Just cause I got kids that are overwhelmed. They're just, they're trying to navigate yeah. and figure it out. And then all of a sudden have, somebody's sitting over their shoulder. Right. I have kids that are overwhelmed, but our kids from third grade up have each their own device. It's not a public school. It's a very costly school. Um, and the K through twos, we sent them home with Chromebooks and directions for the parents to help them log in. Um, but the kids are still very anxious and we use technology often. They were used to Google Classroom, they were used to submitting online, um, but what they're anxious about, most of my Zoom meetings is discussions and conversation. Um, We did the same thing though. We have a modified schedule and we have twice a week I see each class and Wednesday is an asynchronous day. So the students have the day to make corrections, to do projects. And we have meetings, of course, virtually for part of the day and the day to do planning and corrections and have extended office hours in the afternoon. And it's been a lifesaver. It is so much more time to record an introductory message and upload it by 8.30 a.m. to record my notes and whatever I want to tell them and upload it. Because if you have internet problems, if you're not live, you have a lot higher likelihood of keeping it. But they can watch it whenever they have internet that way to get everything that I would have said and done and wrote as I was doing it ahead of time in Google Docs and uploaded by 8.30 a.m. So the asynchronous day is really helpful for the teachers and administrators as well as for the students. (laughs) Well, it is a shortened day, and we were informed that we would give half of the amount of work and expect extra time to turn it in. And that was coming from the other school in Milan that that our director and all of us were in a group meeting listening to that director. Um, And sometimes that's asking too much. Um, In my San Antonio friends that I'm still in touch with through a Facebook teachers group, some of them, and one of my daughters, she's an essential employee in Florida. My son-in-law was called up with the Florida National Guard, and she's supposed to then come home from work and at 6 p.m. make a first grader sit down and do online lessons when he's exhausted. And it, it somehow... We have to pick the main ideas to learn. What is the main student's performance goal probably? Oh, and then there's the summatives. There's no control. Like they have to be open book or performance summatives. Record yourself showing me the answers to these questions and submit it to me by four days from now at midnight whenever your internet comes on because the other ways we I tried to do screen share in a Google form that I turn off and write it's in the morning and every kid in the whole country is online in school and it crashed and then all the teachers are messaging each other in our group chat going now what do we do you know we don't have a class so but still after three weeks most of the time in the zoom meetings is devoted to calming down kids and letting them have social interaction setting up a really tiny offline assignment make a poster to show me something bring it to the next zoom meeting but oh yeah go to google meet and meet with these two kids and do it together um and I'm, I'm doing it because most of their time is going to be social. And then they'll happen to maybe talk about the assignment. But somehow we have to build these things in for the students, for their mental health. And a, they can 
in seventh grade science, you know, some other time. It'll come up again in the future in another grade. So what, what I'm hearing is that, um, and when you're not um, talking, please hit your mute because we're getting some feedback. So what I'm hearing, and I, I want to share some ideas, and then we'll come back. To the, don't worry, we're going to come back to the conversation again right away. But what I'm hearing is that we're actually starting to take a look at, well, what is the learning outcome? What do we really want them to be able to do? You know, do we want them to do all this busy work? We're also hearing that, hmm, maybe, you know, we can't control these things. Maybe we need to actually make them more responsible. We're also hearing that, hmm, these students just don't want to do busy work. They want to connect. They want to communicate. It's interesting that we're hearing these things that we're learning through our experience, and yet the research has been clear about that. I, I, I want to just share a couple more ideas here that I think are going to be important, and then, we'll again, we'll come back to the conversation. And I just want to reiterate that what I'm hearing is, is based in a fair amount of research and and this is this is an important part that I want you to consider um, and and Rhoda I want to I want to thank you for this I'm borrowing your statement and I've given you credit for this there, there's no shortage of resources there's no shortage of resources they're everywhere they're all over the place we don't have a problem with the curriculum we don't have a problem with the content but what we have a um, and, and here's evidence you go to the Lamar site boom we've got all these wonderful tools you know uh, we've got spreadsheets every blog and every organization is sending you emails here are all these wonderful tools here's all this good stuff whether it's George Coros or AJ Giuliani here's all this good stuff here's all this good stuff that you never knew existed <laughs> yeah right there's no magic bullet there's no quick fix right you, know, you can have all this wonderful stuff but the what you're hearing is that the students want to do something else right they want to connect they want to communicate right now um, on that note I, I am going to point you to some really cool resources at the end at the very very end even though I'm saying don't worry you know there's a lot of resources. I'm going to point you to two super resources and, and introduce you to a very important person. So there's a bonus, okay? What we do have is a shortage of focus and, and context, right? And we're hearing this in the conversations. The focus isn't about, you know, those seven times three phone calls or connections with the school. The focus shouldn't be on control. The focus shouldn't be on the content. The focus should be on those authentic learning opportunities that provide the context for learning. Um, don't take my word for it again. You, you know, I'm a researcher, so the, the, the evidence is clear here. We have this article in our resources on our website or on my website. The best online learning is all about using authentic learning opportunities. Technology, it's for creation, not for delivery. Come on, right? And yet you're dealing with administrators who believe it's for delivery, right? Students want to create real stuff. They want to become self-directed. And your role is no longer a content deliverer, and especially online, you need to become that coach, that guide, that mentor, right? It's really important. Now, this is a classroom that some of us face, whether these are younger people or older people, but the reality is students want to use technology to solve real world problems, right? They want to do something with it. You know, in the palms of the hand, whether you're using an Android device or an, an iPhone, the reality is all the world's information is in the palm of their hands. We don't have to deliver content. We don't. It's not, that's not the focus. What kids want to do and what kids need to do in this time is not make Prezi's or make a blog or create a Wordle or to produce a video or to use Edmodo or do a whiteboard or, or to do something, build an app. No. They want to raise awareness. They want to communicate. They want to find answers. They want to join other people. Kids want to make a difference. They want to change people's minds. They want to take action. So we need to get this message to our administrators that technology isn't for the delivery. Technology is really about making those meaningful connections, which you are all talking about, right? That's the key thing. So, and authentic learning, um, you know, you've heard us talk about this. There's so many things that can be done, and we're going to break off into groups where you're going to talk about different opportunities. You can get kids planning a major trip. At some day, this, this crisis will end. Guess what? Life will resume. Create, get kids to create a documentary on Zoom or Skype, interview people. You can have multiple people connecting to FaceTime. There's investigation. Listen, look at all the science that's going on with this COVID-19 stuff. There's a lot of science that can be done. It gets students to explore it. 
explore real world math solutions, budgets, online stores. Oh, there's so many different things. This goes on and on and on. The ePortfolio has now become a wonderful, amazing tool where people can share their experiences. There's a maker space in your garage. If you're fortunate enough to have a garage or a, a workshop or a shop or even, a, even your kitchen or basement can become a maker space. You know, the computational thinking and programming is real about problem solving, right? So this, this is key. Now, those of you who've been in my program know that I've been doing a lifelong experiment on my boys. And my boys grew up doing authentic learning opportunities. My boys' projects are now getting really, really big and they're getting really expensive. My older son is a professional athlete and he's currently building out an old bus, converting it into his mobile shop and travel workshop uh, for races, right? So um, now I have to caution you. If you get your kids used to doing this, these authentic learning opportunities, it might change their lives. And you might get consequences. Parents might have consequences they don't like. For example, my older son is still riding bikes. Dangerously, he's riding bikes, doing flips and stupid stuff, right? My younger son is still playing with cars. Hmm. The difference is the cars are worth you know thousands and thousands of dollars, and they're getting paid to do this. Authentic learning opportunities can make a difference in lives. Don't just prepare them for the test, prepare them for the life, okay? So what are your authentic ideas? We're going to break into groups again, um, and we want you to talk about ideas, and we'll, we'll do the breakout again, and then we'll come back. And then after that, we're just going to fit, continue the conversation. So one more breakout, and then we'll continue the conversation. I'll give you about three minutes. We're mixing it up, and I'll broadcast when to come back. One, two, three, go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Jamie, we can, we can never get away from each other here. Never, never. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> oh, I, I, I planned it that way. <laughs> hey, Dawn, welcome. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> oh, I was, just, I was listening to you, Dr. Eaton, and then I was laughing at what Sue said about about these kids need to go back to school because otherwise they're going to figure out how to learn on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I like that, but the, you know, but the reality is you do need teachers and stuff, but you would love the idea of kids learning, just wanting to just learn too. You know, that's a, that's a nice idea. That, yeah. yeah. We, that we had fun. a, we had a project a few weeks ago before we uh, were, while we were still in school and um, uh, where there was a student who said he even made the connection that everyone naturally just wants to learn and that schools squeeze that out of them and they don't want to learn anymore you know because they're having to learn what they have to learn and not what they what they want to learn and not what might be beneficial to them and so i was really proud of him for making that connection and i i didn't tell him that he made it on his own oh, that's I, awesome that was great that's a good one it's true and they do, they do love the fact of like, what, even in the, the steam lab and when I give them those options, like I'm not telling you what, what you want to yeah. learn. What do you want to learn? Like, there's all these things here. Let's check them out. And they're the excitement behind them and they're young and they love it. Um, and yeah. that's why they're always excited to come there because it's like, I don't have that agenda for them. I just want them to learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the comments that, that Sue made earlier, she said process over product. And I think that's so important that mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, and I, in project based learning, that's what I do, but that's the whole idea is it's, it's the, the project becomes a learning. It's not just that thing that you do at the end of the learning I to agree. show that you, you, you know, that you learn through doing the project. Like, uh, you know, Dr. H your, your son building out the bus, you know, you, you learn through doing that. And, um, yeah. there's a time when he didn't know how to do that. And, you know, <laughs> me you just strip stuff apart and you're like oh now i've got to figure out how to put it back together sort of yeah thing. oh the it, it's um I, I i joke around with with my wife you know when i was out and about sometimes coming home i drive home and there'd be a, a oh there's always a new project in the driveway there's always some car <laughs> some bike some there's something going on but like I said, the projects are getting expensive. My, my younger son is customized. He's got a, a new Audi and he's customizing the suspension. And, and he said he, he, yesterday, he says, oh, dad, you know what? Sometimes this figuring out as you go along gets expensive. Man, if I make a mistake, this is going to cost me like three grand. <laughs> <laughs> three grand mistake. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Don? What are your thoughts on all of this? Um, 
Hello? Can, yep, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, act, I don't really kind of work in the schools with students, but I do um, say I, I work with a, a freshman interest group, and the, uh, we're really hands-on with our learning and having them uh, do different projects or uh, kind of like do things themselves. I, I definitely think that it adds to the learning process of uh, making it authentic, having them do things and learn themselves and, and, you know, help each other. Right. Right. That's important. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where do, where do you live? I actually live in Beaumont and I work at Lamar. I work in the uh, office. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only one not from, except for Dr. H, I think I'm the only one not from uh, Texas around here. Okay, <laughs> where are you group, from? New Jersey. New nice. Jer good old New Jersey. <laughs> what were you, the mid-sentence? Uh, I was the one that was talking. It was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and Zoom brings back automatically, so I set 60 seconds. It does a countdown. Boom. It's, <laughs> it's done. done. <laughs> Got to talk quick. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, for those who are going to be experimenting with this, you can't control. I think you've got two options. You've got a 30 second option and a 60 second option. I found in doing that, I've been doing this for a little while. So you folks are experiencing what I what I normally do. Now, guess what? For for Lamar students, we're going to be implementing this because I, I was forced to use Adobe Connect. But guess what? This crisis gives me opportunities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be using Zoom because it gives me the ability to do this. So um, just a little tip. You do want to give people the, the, the full minute. You do. Because um, the, the beautiful thing about connecting and having the ability to talk to each other. Sure, we're in a larger group. And I know Nicole, there's a couple of times Nicole was just about to say something. And, and she was a little bit, you know, a little bit more polite than others. I'm not saying you're not polite, but she hesitated, right? And then somebody else jumped in. But in the smaller group, guess what? You can actually get that interaction. And that's really important. So um, use that 30, uh, experiment, right? That 60 seconds uh, is something that I use. And, you know, and Tillis and I talked about that. We tried 30 seconds. Yeah, it's too short, right? So you always want to experiment. So on that note, Nicole, there were a couple of times last time that you were just about to jump in. If you want to start the conversation about authentic learning and what your group was talking about, sure. I'll turn it over to you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Rhoda actually had a really great example. Um, if she wants to share in a little bit, I thought it was it was um, a great example of authentic learning. But I'm a family consumer sciences teacher in New Jersey, and I teach juniors and seniors child growth and development. Um, and we run a part-time preschool program. So their authentic learning is really just kind of built into the classroom. They learn about theories uh, of, of child development and how to communicate with the children, and then they actually apply what they learn, um, you know, in the laboratory. Hmm. I, I guess I'll jump in <laughs> um, since she threw the low hand pitch to me. Um, so <laughs> it makes. I, I want to say this holistically, and then I don't mind giving uh, an example or two, but I think like for me, this, it's just been a pivot, like, because I have always challenged myself to create an environment for my students to collaborate, to communicate well, to critically think. Now, granted, every unit, sometimes I just have to straight up teach about photosynthesis. I'm sorry. It is very complicated. The chemistry that's there, like that's, that's a lecture day. It is what it is. Um, but because I've challenged myself for a long time and not put pressure, but just really been open-minded to authentic learning, this whole thing, I'm like, I like it. Like, because now it's forcing me and my students, like, guys, this is what we've done. Like my seniors I've known since seventh grade, they don't, they, this is what they know about me. And so it's, it's causing for sure teachers to shift their pedagogical thinking, which is incredibly scary for some that have been in the business for a very long time. Um, but it, it only lends itself distance learning, remote learning, um, blended learning spaces, um, you know, they, they lend themselves to authentic experiences and authentic environments. And so 
just as an example of um, one that I did a couple of years ago. So obviously back in the classroom, um, we partnered with the Dallas Sioux. We came together between chemistry, bio and physics students and looked and asked the zoo, what do you need help with? We're here to help. We have three science perspectives that are here to help and they needed help with enrichment programs for the animals. The zookeepers, I at the time had no idea that, you know, I thought zookeepers just fed the animals. Well, they actually create the, the devices or the enrichment program for these animals to, uh, to basically let go of their stress. So um, I had students with PVC pipe, drilling holes and putting in straw for the macaw birds because macaw, macaw birds like to play. They'll take a, um, what do you call it? A, a photo, photo, um, phone book and rip it to shreds and it's play. Like it's their way to, to use their innate behaviors and their learned behaviors. And so um, about three of the eight projects that my students created were implemented and utilized at, at the zoo. Um, and so it's, it's that kind of application right now. Um, I'm taking my health and my seniors, um, and we're, we're actually literally asking ourselves the question, how can we help? How can we help our community? Um, I told, I've got a lot of parents that are, um, that work at the hospital. I said, guys, this is, this is no, no different than what we've done in the classroom. Like we now are shifting and pivoting and we're going to help our communities. And so it's just been really it's been challenging because I like things to be done ahead of time. And um, it's, it's a challenge for me to like in the moment create and help uh, it, um, work through, you know, the process of it, but I've let that go. And my kids are rising to the occasion and they're net, they're <laughs> networking with their, um, their local community and like people in their neighborhood. And um, I'm starting to see pockets of teachers wanting to get involved. So um, I think that's just the epitome of, this and my hope is that it challenges this moment in time i can't we can't go back to how we've been a teacher we just can't so anyways Rhoda, if if i may comment that, that's a great story and i appreciate you sharing this is what this session is all about collaborating connecting sharing ideas what I love about the online blended learning aspect and what we're doing here is that we're not scripting this. This is not just sharing with no response. This is, these are real stories. We're connecting and, and I'm about to volunteer Mike to share his story, <laughs> but I prepped him. I, I pre-warned him, but I would love to hear another one like this. Um, and I know Mike has one of those. Rebecca does too. So I, I want to give both of you opportunities to share, but yeah, absolutely. Let jump in. If you guys have questions about this stuff, you know, it's really all about, the authentic learning environment that you create. It's about that learning environment you create because if you don't, if it is a content, post a worksheet, print it out, take a picture, submit it back in, that's not learning. That's not learning and that's happening everywhere. And it's difficult for me because sometimes it's harder to unlearn something than it is to learn something. So we want to try to reach as many people as we can to um, have them focus inward on that learning environment and not go back to teaching the way we've done it before because not saying it doesn't work because anything you know that you do as long as you're not psychologically abusing your children right as Hattie's research says they'll improve but the the goal and just to bring it back here is to find out what works what what works the best right so Mike did you want to share sure yeah um, you know there's as I was working through things and we got into this, the, the work I've been doing in class, like, you know, a lot of y'all were saying, was, you know, we've been doing these authentic things um, and then working with some of, you know, working with other teachers to, to try to get, I've been trying to work with others to get some of these things, like do some of these, um, my dogs are going nuts. Um, <laughs> they, um, but it, it was kind of cool with the kids because, like the work we're doing, the project work, because I was able to go, all right, it's just totally self-paced. Y'all, you tell me what you're working on. You tell me what you're going to get done this week. I'll hold you to that. And we're having those authentic conversations. And they're like, this is awesome because it gives, they're actually doing more work for me than some of the other classes because it's a nice break and they're, they got a choice in it. And then, you know, so that's creating some of those conversations where we're looking at ways to, expand that um and it, it's it's kind of cool because the kids are not getting those you know they're like i, I don't want to do the worksheet i don't want to do the test i want to 
want to design this thing. And, you know, like we're, you know, I get kids that are doing architecture work and they're figuring out how many, you know, square footage of waste that they need and the dumpster sizes they need. And then, you know, traffic flows. And then now they're like, well, but we got to keep people away. And then how do we deal with people? You know, we got all these people crowded in and it, it's getting really authentic and they're having these interesting, we're able to have these interesting conversations that just pop up naturally. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's huge. Um, and it, it, I wish it didn't take this to get that, but have other teachers doing that too. Rebecca, do you uh, want to jump in here? Sure. Is, am Thanks, I Mike. unmuted? That works well. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that um, my students have been using online workspaces this whole time. They've had a lot of choice. I have a very, very diverse population. Um, my school is kind of like a, almost like a magnet school for special ed unofficially. Um, so we have, a lot, and also newcomers who are learning English. So there, every one of my classes is just full of different needs. And so um, one of the things that I've found is that creating a learning space where students can go online, interact with a carefully curated library of resources, and then build their own project is the best way to teach everybody all at once without having to make a whole lot of, you know, very specific, you know, supports for every different kind of student. Um, and so ironically, uh, right before all this hit, my students were working on creating posters to expose myths about coronavirus. And so um, these students were going online, they were making, they were doing a lot of research about the things that they had heard. They'd heard that you can catch coronavirus from um, Chinese food. You could catch coronavirus by going to Chinatown. Um, you know, all these ridiculous things. Somebody said that beer would keep you from getting coronavirus. And so I said, okay, let's research all this stuff. And so the students went and they researched everything on their own and they created their own um, digital posters about coronavirus. Well, the crazy thing is, is that we went on lockdown right in the middle of the project. And so as we went on lockdown, my students were just logging on to our workspace and working on their projects because they were excited about it. And so the funny thing is that we, we already have projects coming in while other teachers are just building their workspaces. So it's kind of funny. My students were sending me messages about other classes. Well, when are we going to do science? When are we going to have, you know, English class ready? What is everybody doing? And, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of interesting how this process has helped my students to just not miss a beat. So, you know, I think that having these uh, learning spaces ready to go, you know, the kids get excited about their work because that's their space to learn, that's their space to create and to have a voice and not just to consume something that somebody has just given them. Uh, Rebecca, I want to thank you for that. That's, that's so exciting that, you know, um, you're, you're essentially extending your innovation plan. Mike, same thing. Um, and, and I appreciate your comment that it, unfortunately, it took this event for this to happen in this way. And Rhoda, the work that you're doing in terms of these real world projects, uh, this is amazing. This is, this, is, this is what we need to hear. So folks, ask questions, investigate, look at, you have an opportunity here. And, and if you've got other insights, you know, there's everybody jump in, go, 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 go. Um, so I was saying in the comments how I was really sad at first because I love teaching quadratics and exponential functions to my students. It's my favorite thing all year to teach. We make catapults, you know, we do all that kind of fun stuff, the real kind of stuff there. And then I was like, wait, I can't do that now. Like, how am I going to build a catapult on like, you know, Microsoft Teams? So it took me a minute to realize like, my kids can do this without me being there. Like they can make a catapult. They can do that. They can like really use the information that's out there now, especially for the exponential functions and all of that. So it took me having a mind shift, even though like, I already know this, I know this stuff. And I was start, I was implementing it, but like me being actually out of it now and just leaving it up to the kids and leaving it up to them to learn and create without me being there hovering over them, um, that took a mind shift for me. And it's something that like, I already know, but I still had to really step back and think about it. All right, is my mic working? Ah. Okay, so I don't really have anything to say right now. I just wanted to make sure my mic was working.
hey, somebody's going to bring levity to the group. <laughs> we, we were talking about using alcohol for hand sanitizing. So it, it, it can work and maybe you might forget certain things while you're working on making it work. <laughs> yeah. What I really like, really, because I've been listening the whole way here or most of the way, is that what this group here has done more so than the other meetings that we've had is that they've really expressed how they are learners. Even though some of them have gone through the program and have had different experiences, they've really, they've not been afraid to say, oh man, how am I going to teach quadratic equations? I can't do it. And, oh wait, I can do it. So they've embraced the concept of, I don't know, but I will. And we're moving forward. And I, I really think that mm. a large percentage of our current teachers are afraid and they're not willing to just put it out there, present the question, see what happens. So to add to that, Dr. Bedard, I've met this person who 30 years ago came up with this idea called inquisitivism. <laughs> and this person's sitting in the room right now with his finger, right? <laughs> yes. So it's that whole notion of hmm, what does this button do? Or leaving those questions open because oftentimes we find that it's not the right answers that we're looking for, but it's the questions that's being asked. Um, and how can we reframe, reorient our own thinking and, and help our kids move their thinking by asking different questions how to solve these problems. And essentially, that's what the innovation plans. And, and when we talk about the program for people who are unfamiliar, we're talking about the digital learning and leading program at Lamar University. So folks come up with innovation plans and really try to impact on a larger scale their learning environments, their communities, their schools. And... Uh, even beyond that. And that's what the, these learning labs are for, really, is to share these experiences. So I noticed the same thing, cycling back to you, Dr. Bedard, that everyone in here sees themselves as a learner, too. And because of that, it puts you in a position of being a facilitator to learning and not the, the teacher. You know, I'm, I'm going to bear all this knowledge. You, you are now thinking of things horizontally with your with your learners and that is that is key that's what the learners mindset is really all about and you know we talk about that in one of our our both of our books actually that um we've co-written so that's all i wanted to say there i i want to i want to piggyback on that just for a second um and here's an added benefit again all you know that i've been doing a longitudinal study on my boys and so at some point they might sue me who knows well we'll see i think they're going to be okay <laughs> um my both of my boys uh, because they are perpetual learners they seek out other mentors they see other people um who that they can learn from for example my my older son races professionally he also works for one of the founders of mountain biking in the world in here in north vancouver and through this relationship he's connected to four or five other key founders of the biking you know, mountain biking movement. My younger son realizes that to run his business, he's got to connect to a bunch of mentors. And so he, 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 a friend of mine is a lawyer and this guy is just amazing. He's hilarious. He's inquisitive. He's always ex exploring things. And my younger said, dad, dad, do you think, do you think, do you think Grant would be my mentor? Do you think I could learn from him? So my boys are always looking to people who are out there that can become mentors and that they can learn from. So if you help your kids learn how to learn and get excited about recognizing that there's people out there who love learning, guess what? They'll seek them out and then those people will become mentors. And then, you know what? Both of my boys are also volunteering with, with youth groups. They're recognizing that they can pass it on. Hmm. I think we need to go down this path. So I just wanted to add that. So thank you for the ideas. Keep on going. We've, we've, got, a, we've got about 10 more minutes, 12 minutes before we can wrap up. So keep the conversation going. A Anale, there's a couple of times I, I saw you about to hop in. Don't, don't hesitate. Sometimes you just got to jump in. <laughs> I was looking at the chat real quick, catching up. <laughs> so right now with our district, what I've been struggling with is, again, like a lot of you, they're trying to transition what everyone's doing in the classroom immediately online and doing direct teach videos to the point where um, as a third grade teacher of all subjects, that's 10 videos a week for me. And um, it's just, incredibly overwhelming because you know and I've 
I've often felt like a failure through this, so I have to keep reminding myself of a growth mindset. I'm learning Google Classroom too. I'm learning all of these other uh, digital platforms. And um, I, I also built a course in Schoology that I really wanted to use. And I tried to implement that into the Google Classroom before we really knew what was happening because we were on spring break when we found out. So I was like, I'm just gonna get started now. And then I was told that it was too much and too overwhelming and to take that down and that we needed to do direct teach videos every week with, um, with, with two skills from IXL Im implemented right underneath the direct teach videos. And it just kind of bursted my bubble a bit. And I know that everyone's super overwhelmed and it's just, I've had to try to talk to them about like, there's so much more we can. Oh, oh. We, we lost you for oh. a sec. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know what what you heard last. You you were. There's point. so There's much so more we can. There's so much more that we can do, um, and so I'm actually going to have a Zoom meeting with them this week to talk, just talk to them about maybe some other options or just some flexibility so that maybe I can help. I've I've offered to help many times being in part being a part of this program. I really really want them to see this in, in a chance, like for the next eight weeks that we're gonna be doing this as a chance for all of us to learn together and then have more authentic projects, just like uh -huh. we've been talking. I have one for you. Maybe you should invite them to a live learning lab like this. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll have to figure out what that topic, our next one will be. We have so many that we've got a list of <laughs> different you ones that we wanna. You have to do direct teach videos about every single skill. I am not an expert on every single skill. <laughs> like poetry I know that there are so many other people that could teach poetry better than I can so I can I can connect them to that information you know if that makes sense so so Anna, Anna Lee, I have a question sure who's the they that told you to do this or admin admin who principal curriculum director superintendent who specific so we have a head of school who's brand new and she is just kind of filling in and then we've got an assistant principal and it was the assistant principal and she wasn't mean it was more of just like we're all overwhelmed it i think they felt like their world was falling apart they were not prepared for this we are not a one-to-one -one district um a lot of the parents are it, this is kind of a real loose hippie type of school and so a lot of the parents don't even really want their kids um on devices they think it's more screen time so i've had a lot of conversations with parents that just because we're we're doing we're implementing some learning online doesn't mean that it's screen time these are very different things and so it just it just kind of feels like an uphill battle right now um but again i'm i'm just really thankful that i've gone through this program in the last year and a half i mean when when we were told that you know the the shift in learning is coming and we're going to shift to more of an online environment it really hit us in the face i feel like mm -hmm. out of nowhere I, I think it's interesting because um i was invited into this group by by dr sue and um we're colleagues and um it, it's just i work a lot with superintendents and administration and they are very ill prepared and this is, uh, this is really key. And so what's happening is you've got a groundswell of innovators like yourselves who are willing to step out and take the risk. And you need to continue to do that, but you definitely need to put your arms around your administrative staff sure. and invite them in because they, they're in a position of authority and leadership and they don't want to look bad, but right. they are definitely ill-equipped. The best leaders are the ones that say, okay, tell me what you know, and, you know, and kind of throw up their sleeves and work along with you. And that's what you want to establish, that invitation um, to those uh, leaders, because, um, you know, they, nobody took the time to teach them. They just kind of threw all this, um, uh, you know, expectations and so forth on them. And so then it's a trickle down, you know, I get hit, so they're or you're getting hit, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very interested in all the conversation you all are. I mean, this is really, really key. I'm glad that Dr. Sue, you know, invited me into this group because um, I'm learning a, a, a lot firsthand. It's, it's validated a lot of my 
um, assumptions and, and um, real world experience hearing from you, but it's also very hopeful um, because you're just, you're just scratching the surface on this and you're gonna continue to do extremely well. Beverly, I really appreciate those encouraging words, and I'm glad that you joined us and, and you're recognizing that we do have these innovative hearts and minds here that have come together to share frustration, share excitement, share opportunities, and, and we want to thank you all for sharing. Um, I, I want to respect your time a little bit, and so I just want to uh, let you know that we're going to wrap up in just a couple of minutes. We've got a few more few more minutes to talk a little bit. And I just want to encourage everybody and, and let you know that Dr. Thibodeau and I and, and are available if you need to bring in an external voice of authority. Um, as, as Dr. Thibodeau mentioned, I've been, I started teaching online back in 1994. So for me, this is not my first rodeo. And uh, no, I, I haven't lived through this type of a pandemic, but at the same time, I've made more mistakes in online learning than most people know about online learning. So you can bring us in. We want to be your resource because, Annalee, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. It's, you, you, actually, you can't maintain that. And, and that's not going to be effective for you. It's not going to be effective for your students. And so you, you might want to find some happy medium and look at ways of, of providing alternatives. So uh, we want to encourage and support you. So a uh, couple more thoughts, ideas, just before we wrap up here. I have one thought. Well, I have multiple thoughts, but one I'm going to share. I want... I want all your kids, I don't care what age they are, to produce content that tells teachers how to teach online. Basically, they need to be learners. So I want good, really good, the best videos you know, I'm only kidding. Have the kids talk about what it takes to learn online. I'm sure they will educate these um, direct teaching teachers and tell them that they want to see the principals and the admins too so they can tell them. Carl, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You mentioned a few weeks back you had a project where one of your students had recognized, yeah, you know what, school kind of gets in the way of learning. Do you want to just share on that? And maybe maybe there's a video here that your student can create, Carl. Yeah. Um, so we had uh, we'd done a unit that was looking at political revolutions. And um, at the end of that unit, we wanted to kind of bring that back to uh, to give them some context and, and, and allow them to really – Think about what what revolutions were and so we said all right it's your turn rebel against something revolt against something whatever you want to revolt against let us know and then they just had to come up with some way to tell us about their uh, their rebellion and um and this one guy and i was really he, he's kind of a soft-spoken guy so it was sort of funny to to see him stand up and do this but he did he absolutely embraced this idea and he said um children want to learn Everybody is born a learner and everybody wants to learn. And then he said, schools have a remarkable way of squeezing that out of us. And um, really, really proud of him for that. That was unprompted. We didn't say anything that would lead him that way. Um, he said, so that's my rebellion. It's against this, this forced kind of, you know, you're making us learn things that don't matter. And I think that's where the, the A and COVA really comes in. It's the authentic learning opportunities. It's what are we, is what we're learning matter? And if it doesn't matter, then let's not learn it. And, um, and so that's really where he, he kind of took off with that. And that was, it, it was funny. That was the last project we did before spring break. And then we haven't been back. And so, um, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there and say, all right, it's, it's your turn to make a video about that so I can present it to all of my colleagues and, you know, so. I, you know what, this, this might be a conversation for another, uh, another online uh, learner's lab. Uh, we, we, we need to explore this idea a little bit more. Sue, this is a good idea about making videos. Now, again, I want to respect your time. We did agree to go 10 minutes over because of our password issues <laughs> the upgrade to Zoom. So I just want to wrap up with a couple of thoughts and I want to encourage you. I'm going to share. Remember, I, I promised you a bonus, right? I did promise you some bonus ideas and I was going to introduce you to uh, probably two resources that are just, I mean, the best, the, the two best resources I know, right, um, that, that are available to you. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? 
Yeah, yeah, Google. Guess what? Those people who are sending you those emails with all those amazing resources, they found them in Google. And if they didn't find them in Google, they found them in YouTube. Yeah, you, you've always had the best resources available to you. Think about that. That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. And those, those consolidated lists don't help you. You help you. Now, I want you to take a look at the most important person that is available to make an impact on your students' lives. You. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this mirror here. Your system, and Annalee, this is important to you and everybody else. Your system is treating you like a pawn. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the chess, a pawn can only move in one direction, one move. Your system with that direct instruction requirement is treating you like a pawn. But guess what? They might treat you like a pawn, but you can, you can function as a king or a queen, or a queen in particular. The queen can go anywhere. You can go anywhere. You can go anywhere. You need to go anywhere. So I want to encourage you. The system might treat you like a pawn, but guess what? You are a queen. Don't let anybody let you think otherwise. Okay. I um, we're, We've had a lot of questions. You know our contact information. There's books. There's resources. There's all that good stuff. Um, what I want to uh, encourage everybody is thank you. Thank you for this conversation. And we're just getting started. Um, you folks are the most important people in your children's, your learner, your, your students' lives. And you have the ability to make a difference. One, you're going to change the world one learner at a time, right? Dr. Thibodeau and I are here to help you and support you. Actually, we're all here to help each other and support each other. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this time. And I'm so proud of all of you. Listening to you folks talk makes me realize, yes, we are going to change the world. <laughs> it, it isn't because I'm a delusional optimist. We are because of you. Thank you, folks. Thanks. Real quick before you sign off and after hearing that, what is it, maniacal laugh of Dr. H's. <laughs> <laughs> if you would visit the link for the Flipgrid and provide us a 45-second reflective feedback on today's session. We're going to be incorporating different digital tools, different learning labs, different thing, ways to do things, to uh, learn things as we go, immerse you in that environment. So we'd love if you'd add to that. <laughs>